What's up guys it's the real deal welcome back to the channel guys today we are going to be looking at what's coming up this week i'm going to help you guys prepare um, and also just give you tricks and tips where i can to help you guys get the most out on your accounts so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to switch onto screen mode go into polarium play and what you do is you click on all games go to learn more events and then you can actually see what's coming up. So first thing off, we've got Raid and the YouTube premium experience coming to an end. I accidentally already had done like a YouTube premium trial, a complete waste of money in my opinion. So I would say, make sure you don't do that. And if you do want to spend your money, spend it in Raid, I guess. Uh, the next thing would be um, Siege. So we'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, the Drop Fever events were pretty nice, but it's only two times. I feel like... You don't really get enough. It needs to be three times for me. But there was Savage, there was Speed, and then also Orc Gear, which obviously we need for the new Fusion Champion. Um, Soul Summon event we'll talk about. Um, we'll look at some of the progressive chances as well. Bit of a shame, if you click on here, it doesn't actually show you what's up for grabs. And then we've got um, CVC, which we'll talk about. Um, Shyak. So if you actually look here as well, I actually really like this because you can see... We've got Spider Tormen, Dungeon Divers, and the Artifact Enhancement. So, you know, obviously we need to make sure we get all these fragments so we can summon Shyak. Um, but yeah, it just it's just good that they've done that because you can see it. And then the other thing is that um, we'll talk about Shyak as well because I'm going to tell you how I would use him and spend him. And then Sand Devil, we can get those Prism Jewels that we need for the Summon uh, Soul event. Um, and then, yeah, the Siege Gift as well, which is pretty nice. Um, and then at the very bottom, they've got Plat Reset here, which probably doesn't matter to about probably only a thousand people. You probably are, you know, go for Plat. So, yeah, doesn't really matter to the rest of us. So let's come back to Raid. And we'll start off with CVC. So CVC is coming up. This is non-personal rewards. And for me, well, for, for our clan, we actually stop dead hard on um, 5.4 mil. We don't go any further than that. And the reason for this is it gives you an easier matchup for CVC personal rewards. Um, and obviously personal rewards, you get way better stuff. You get sacred, so you get extra void shards. You get extra legendary skill tomes, all that good stuff. And then actually some extra legendary or sometimes mythical gear, which is just way, way better. So don't, don't waste it here. Save it for then. Um, and that's what I'll that's what I'm gonna be doing is with Shyak, I will save him for um CVC personal rewards just because he's gonna give me a whole bunch of points. It means I can save some gems, don't have to burn them on spider. Um and somehow also I've actually already get 100 fragments. I don't know how I did it. Um so I'll go a little bit overkill, get some of these exchange points as well. But yeah. But do not use him for regular CVC. It's such a waste. I mean, in my old clan, uh, everyone used to just go hard every CVC, and you don't need to. Like, literally just go for the bare minimum, hit that 5.4 mark, and then go hard for CVC. Uh, it's just like some of the whales couldn't control themselves. Whenever they saw, like, champions, they were just going hard. Uh, the other thing as well, so I think every player needs to get about 140k, I think, um, to hit that. But, you know, what I'll do is I will actually start to just go through um like tag arena um faction wars all of that stuff and just sort of do it now just so it means that other people in my clan that i know that you know that they're gonna want to sort of go for some of the summons and stuff it just means that they've got some wiggle room and they can do stuff where you know i'm not interested and also i can go full turtle just save my resources so i don't need to to waste that so yeah, just obviously, so we're gonna farm up CVC before um CVC, farm up tag before CVC goes live, because that one gives us a whole bunch of points. So then we'll look at the altar of souls and the summon pool. So um there's a sand double event. I'm gonna have to try and really squeeze that as much as I can because I do want to get those prism jewels for it. They have moved it up though by quite a bit. I mean, come on, Plarium. Like, I could just get a six-star, you know, like, epic. 
which is probably not going to help me. So um, I hate that they do this. You know, just give a dog a bone. Seriously, guys. Um, but if we come back, there are some insane champions up for grabs. Like, I can't actually... Almost every single row, all these champions are top tier. Yeah, like not... I Maybe, maybe the bottom row is probably the weakest. But outside of that, every single champion is pretty much insane um for epics as well there's you know we've got seer man eater oboro whisper royal guard the fat man venom age husk i literally almost uh tyrell as well like i feel really underrated skull crown as well great for clan boss S almost every single champion here is pretty baller so yeah th they are <laughs> it's very very good so we come to look at what you're spending. So it's 45 for a summon. And if we were to spend 500 um, is like 50 quid. So that's like 10 champions. So 10, pa well, 10, no, five pounds a champion. It's not bad to be honest. Um, obviously I still feel like it's quite a lot of money, um, but it is what it is. And then you don't really get that much extra if you spend a hundred, um, I don't know. I would love to be able to like sort of click and just to see if you can buy more than one, but obviously I don't want to do that. Um, but yeah, but yeah, insane. I mean, it's an insane pool for me. I'd love like a six star Rotus. Um, that would be my number one. I don't have Taris. So yeah, obviously he would be my other number one. Uh, Gnu as well, obviously like a beast for PVE content. So I think the next thing we'll have a look at is Siege and Siege. Um, I'm kind of disappointed, to be honest. Literally, everyone's been so hyped for it. It's coming, it's coming. And now it's started and we literally have done nothing. All, our clan strategy is we've just donated everything to the strong, like to the, uh, the stronghold. I think I donated it to Boozer and he just like does it. So we're not really doing anything. So it's pretty, pretty boring at the moment. I think when it goes live, hopefully it will be a bit more fun. I'm hoping it's not just like, you know, you have your clan leader just does it all and we just all sort of sit there like lemons. Um, but there is like quite a lot of strategy involved using the towers. There's a uh, choke points in here as well. So there's all kinds of strategy that you can use to sort of beat the opponent. But what I think is, for me personally, I think it's one of those things where it's a lot of reading. It's pretty boring. Like, I mean, honestly, who can be bothered to read all this? But the most important thing is for me, it's like you have to do it. Once you do one of these, I'm sure you'll pick it up and you'll understand it. And then you'll start to understand strategies and start doing it. And there's nothing wrong, wrong, wrong with losing your first one. If you lose your first one, it's fine. You learn, you learn so much more from losses than you do from win. A bit of a cliche, but it's true. You know, if we lost, I wouldn't be mad. You know, I'm sure we'd learn loads from it and we'd be ready for the next one. So yeah, Siege, just very, very underwhelming at the moment. Um, and then we've got loads of um, champions coming up for grabs. Can't see it quite yet. So just, I'll be back in a sec, guys, and I'll give you a rundown of all the champion events that are going to be coming up for CVC. So for this uh, CVC, we do have a progressive event for Tuesday and Wednesday. So we'll start with Tuesday. Uh, Mathis Blackfail is up for grabs and he is so cool. Like, look at those aesthetics. Like, no one, he's got to be one of the best looking champions in the game. Unfortunately, his kit is okay, but um, he just doesn't do that much damage. So he's a bit underwhelming. Personally, I would not go for him. Next on the list, we've got uh, For All. Um, he's really, really good, especially for Hydra. Um, resistance aura in all battles um, the more buffs he has oh, sorry the, if allies have buffs then they get all these bonuses which is great resistance accuracy and the damage they do as well um, he also places increased resistance and perfect veil as well across the board um, throwing out debuffs as well block buffs being one of the strongest in the game especially for hydra and decreased accuracy as well which is going to be great for the head of mischief. So with that, with the increased resistance and the passive as well, it's going to be very, very difficult. You're going to, it makes it a lot easier. And also the decreased speed as well. Uh, then we've got uh, Olia. 
I, I think she, she was a fusion. I, I remember skipping her. And she's actually pretty decent, uh, great for progression. I have actually lost to her in arena a few times. Um, but yeah, she's pretty decent. Um, surprisingly good. Next on the list, we've got Gaeth. Gaeth. Um, pretty cool looking champion. Uh, decrease crit rate and crit damage is really good for arena and hydra really reduces the damage that um, comes into you especially the crit damage um the only thing i guess with hydra though is that um i think bosses only have is it 15 percent crit rate um or 25 i can't remember the top of my head um but obviously decreasing their crit rate means that they won't be able to crit on you which should reduce damage a lot uh, A3 is bringing loads. We've got ally protection, reflect damage, increase resistance, and strengthen. A lot of these champions uh, that they're doing for this pool seem to have increased res. But yeah, ally protection as well, like such a great uh, buff. The damage and mitigation is insane. A2, attacks enemies, uh, increases duration of all allies' buffs by one turn. Nice, so she's a buff extender. Um, and then she plays an extra hit. But um, yeah, not sure what a damage is like, to be honest. And then the Void Legendary. So got two really good ones up for grabs. I think first one's... No, not a Lizardman. Ogren Tribes, there we go. Um, Gazor, like, this guy is... I, he looks like a piece. He looks like the Juggernaut from Marvel. But um, yeah, like... Look at the detail on those shields. Sick. Um, so this guy, um, like great for Hydra, great for Arena. Um, like for Hydra, top tier damage dealer. Insane. And also he brings a lot to the table as well. Not just his damage, but um, again with the increased res, provoke as well. And doing uh, enemy max HP damage. And then Diamante, oh, sorry, Diamant. Uh, very, very, a new champion. Um, again, with the increased res, he's also got intercept as well. Um, also um, increases buff duration as well. Looks like a really good healer. A really interesting kit. I think I'm not too sure if he's really worth going for, though. I'll probably choose um, Grazir, Grazar, Grazar over him. So then Wednesday, we've got, um, I would say, probably the better champions to go for. Um, so Mitchy, I mean, this guy's a beast, just hits insanely hard on Hydra. I've seen people pump out some big numbers with him, but you know, he's thrown out Hex. He's doing drop defense, decrease attack and a HP burn. And he just absolutely slaps. Um, I actually lost him in arena as well. And um, he does strip. So yeah, really, really good champion. One of the best. And then one champion that I find a little bit disappointing. There she is, Kyoku. Um, I think I've got three copies of her now. They all sit in the vault. Um, I personally find her really underwhelming. I think some people are a big fan of her. I mean, I love the way she looks, but yeah, she's just not that great. Um, but she you know, does ally protection block damage, which is very nice. Means that she's got survivability, um, and your allies are going to be protected for a long time. And with the block damage, it just, it does soak up a lot of damage. But I just feel like she's not that great. She is just okay. Like, I don't know. She used to be in Tag Arena a lot. I have not seen her in Tag Arena for at least a year now, probably. She just gets no play anymore in, in the top level of Tag. She's not there anymore. Ah, oh, and then one of my favorite champions um the rat king where are you so vermin lord this guy in my opinion is the best bomb champion um just so good at blowing up stone skin if there's no sheep and with that new gear set coming uh gear set coming out i feel like he's gonna come way back into the metal a3 throwing out loads of bombs then you get a second turn and then you can blow people up and um, literally just drops people um, and then the a1 just throwing out bombs at random he does insane damage and also can be used for Bommel as well. Uh, I think I farm Bommel in like two and a half minutes using Vemon Lord. Um, but yeah, and then after he blows people up, he puts out poisons on them as well. 
Next on the list are the fusion that I skipped. If I had sacred, I would probably go for this guy. Um, Wixwell. Oh man, this guy is like the king of Hydra. If you don't have him, he is definitely worth going for. And if you already have him, it's probably worth getting a second copy. He's that good. People are doing billions of damage with Wixel. Absolute beast. And then the two Void Legendaries got another Shadow King, um, Rio. So I actually managed to pull her recently. I've not used her yet. She used to be insane. Like if there was any content you were stuck on, you bring in Rio and you just get through it. Um, she's like a hybrid. She's a damage dealer and she's a cleanser. Um, and yeah, she's just insane. Throws out all these debuffs as well on single target. And she also heals. So she does a lot. Um, but I do feel like for Arena, she's definitely fallen off. Um, definitely been power crept. Um, she, I think in the last six months, maybe a year, um, she's nowhere near as prominent as she was in Arena, um, which is a shame because she, she looks so cool as well. Like, you know, you got to respect it. And then last but not least, uh, one of the best champions in the game, Krisk. So um, Krisk might be making a comeback. Once uh, Polymorph is out of the way, he will be god tier again for Arena. So he will come back, back from the dead. But um, like for Hydra, he again can be used for teams that do billions of damage. Um, his passive, throwing out decreased attack, decreased defense, throwing out a provoke, increased speed, um, ally protection, continuous heal, and decrease speed he does it all and yeah just yeah and it's an aoe as well like you could literally just put a hex on him just to add that in the mix as well he is one of the best pve champions in the game um just yeah if you pull him early on in the game he will carry you from start to finish um yeah just one of the ogs and one of the best that's pretty much the video guys i hope this helps you uh, please leave me a cheeky thumbs up. Make sure you smash, smash, smash that subscribe. And I'll see you all in a video soon. Peace.